tow bar is another accessory to which you can purchase. And what's nice about it is that you just slip the squat stand on and then you put the tow bar on. So there are three positions. And just like you would do squats, you can bring it up or down and that's gonna affect the height of the hip and the, the, rather the range of motion of the hip and the ankle. But I wanna talk more about this tow bar with relationship to planking. So I'm gonna have Jeff go into a kneeling position. And we're at the bottom position with the tow bar. And this might be really nice. This might be a nice position where you see a good alignment and that they can get nice range of motion. And then if I transition someone from this position to more of a full plank, so now I'm gonna have you step off with one leg, bring one leg back, and then transition right into a push-up position. This is where you would eventually open up the glide board so you'd push back and come back in. That's really challenging. And oftentimes, people don't have the upper body strength to perform such a movement pattern. So I'm gonna have you kneel down. And in this circumstance, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna bring the toe bar all the way to the top level. You always check to make sure it's at the top by wiggle jiggling. Very technical term. So now he's gonna transition back into that plank position. And now I've just raised the ground up and so I've accommodated potentially for some upper body strength, lack of strength, and now we can start to build more of a stabilization and a strength effect here too with the planking. Uh, when I have worked with people before, and you can take a break for a second, what I've heard two things. I've heard when I brought that incline up, although I haven't adjusted the incline, so I haven't really adjusted the tower height, but when I bring this up on a level, People will say the exercise feels that much harder. And what I have seen with patients is that because I've helped them with strength, all of a sudden their range of motion has increased because they have that ability to explore. So just note that sometimes when they say something or a patient says, well, this feels this way, keep asking yourself why and what have you changed and how does that affect the exercise? So another component that's nice is when we do, if you work with Pilates and you're using the toe bar, there's an exercise called the elephant. So you're gonna come all the way in. And in the typical way on the reformer, I'm gonna have you stand up and you're gonna bend forward, is when someone's lacking flexibility, we typically move their feet back and their feet can go, you can go up onto the shoulder blocks, but we don't have them here. When you move your feet back, you actually make the exercise harder because you're starting from a more open position. So I'm gonna move his feet in and he can be round back or flat back, whichever you decide. But the focus here right now is not necessarily on the spinal position, is what I want to discuss, is the fact that if he has hamstring lack, hamstring strength, and I want to accommodate for it, you now have the ability to bring the floor up to him. So now, I can raise him up and I'm bringing his trunk up so I can accommodate for that hamstring. I don't have to move the legs back and start him from a harder point of view. I can start him from here and then he can move through the movement pattern. So think about the toe bar height and what happens when you change the relationship of the levels and how that changes the force to the shoulders and what that might do to the exercise of the flexibility requirements of the lower body. So that's the toe bar.